Hello and welcome back to the Grade 11 ELA Unit 6 video series. I'm Alisa Ruffin again from Leading Educators here to help you guide you through your learning for Unit 6. I know that you all did some phenomenal work yesterday. We had a good time together and I'm hoping you're ready for today as we build on yesterday's learning. Again, we will be using your learning packets and a brief overview of today. So we've already done day one, uh, the unit launch. And so you were able to uh, read through Old Man at the Bridge for the first time, complete that vocabulary chart, do a summary and reflection uh, in your note taker as directed. And now we are going to move on, ladies and gentlemen, to day two. And as you can see there, we've got a close read coming of the text here. Um, we're going to be looking at the theme and an image. But before we do that, before we talk more about the human condition and the essential question, um, we are going to warm up with our riddle of the day as we talked about yesterday. So yesterday we did a, a riddle. I hope you tried it out on a few people. Got them stumped there. But we'll see. We'll see how you fare today. So today's riddle is as follows. I have streets, but no pavement. I have cities, but no buildings. I have forests, but no trees. I have rivers, yet no water. And just like yesterday, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to either pause the video to avoid a spoiler alert, engage some people around you to see if they have an idea, or you can just pause and, and wait for the answer. But I'm going to again encourage you not to do the Google thing. It's so satisfying to figure it out without Google. So put some heads together, see what you got, get that brain fired up, and let's see. So I'm going to take a beat, get ready for the spoiler. What am I? A map. You know what? That makes a lot of sense. All right. So now we've got some thinking out of the way here. Uh, let's move on to our overview for today. So resources and materials. You're going to need the old man at the bridge text, which you were into yesterday and should already have your first round of annotations in those margins. You need your learning packet and your lesson to note catcher, a pen or pencil. And again, a smartphone is optional. Don't necessarily need it. It really is completely um, up to you. Overview for today. Today's lesson is a close read. Your targets are I can identify parts of the story that describe the characters, appearance, actions and feelings. You can respond to the thoughts, feelings, and actions of the characters in the story. You can explain the story's theme. Uh, next there, you have to read Old Man and the Bridge again. And again, um, thinking about those annotating. So you're going to annotate again today in the think box, but this time you're going to be looking for something different. And we'll go through what those things are. You are going to talk to a family member, caregiver, or friend again about some specific examples from the story that support the theme that you identified in the story. So by now you should know what the theme is. And I'm not talking about the broad theme of the human condition. I'm talking about what is the central message of Old Man at the Bridge, that specific story, um, just that story. And if you've identified that, talk about it with a family member, caregiver, friend, and then provide some examples from the story. Give them your receipts, your evidence. Write and I in your right section today, you're going to identify and explain the theme of Old Man at the Bridge. And then finally, you're going to get a little creative today. You're going to either create or include an image that you believe best reflects the theme of the story. So this allows you to, to kind of engage another part of your brain there, which I think is going to be fun and cool to see. So here are your thinking annotations for today. You are going to circle descriptive words or phrases that paint a picture of the character's thoughts or feelings. So now we're not just talking about the setting. We're talking about characters, their thoughts and feelings. You're going to draw quotation marks in the margins beside any dialogue the characters are having and make any observations about that dialogue. And then write down any thoughts or questions that you have about the author's word choice, tone, or how he's portraying the characters. And then ultimately, you should really be trying to flesh out what is the theme of the story of Old Man at the Bridge? So let me quick model um, a close read of Old Man at the Bridge for you here. Again, I'm circling words or phrases that reflect the character's feelings or thoughts. I'm drawing quotation marks and I'm writing in the margin. So I've brought up a section of the text for us to look at. It is on page 755 of the text and it begins with line 28. Um, and we'll read that together. 
but what will they do under the artillery when I was told to leave because of the artillery? Did you leave the dove cage unlocked? I asked. Yes. Then they'll fly. Yes, certainly they'll fly, but the others, it's better not to think about the others, he said. If you are rested, I will go, I urged. Get up and try to walk now. Thank you, he said and got to his feet, swayed from side to side, then sat down backwards in the dust. I was taking care of animals, he said dully, but no longer to me. I was only taking care of animals. There was nothing to do about him. So now that I've read the text, I'm going to circle some words or phrases that I think reflect the character's thoughts and feelings. So one of the things that jump out to me is the term or the phrase I urge. That means he's trying to like move him along, hurry him along, I'm urging him, I'm moving him. Like, come on, let's move it. Um, And that's the soldier speaking. And then the old man speaks a few lines later and says, I was taking care of animals, he said dully. So dull gives you an idea of like he had this flat tone about him, almost like he wasn't there. But he wasn't really talking to the soldier anymore. He was just kind of talking to this kind of empty space, this kind of faced out. And he says it again to himself. I was only taking care of animals. And that makes me think maybe he's in shock. The fact that he is continually repeating himself um, and not really addressing the soldier as if the soldier's not there anymore. There's a lot of dialogue here, as you can see by the quotation marks that are already present. But I'm going to focus on this particular section here, and I put quotations and mark quotations there. Um, and what I was thinking, my reaction to this dialogue is, I'm not sure. I can't quite put my finger on whether or not I feel like the soldier is trying to comfort the old man and get him to safety, or if he's just becoming impatient with him. Like, can you please move it along? I have a job to do. So I feel like I need to read a little bit more and maybe one more time to get a real flavor of who the soldier is and what his intention is and his interaction, how to really characterize the action between him and uh, the old man. And then finally, there is this this statement that says there was nothing to do about him. And this is the narrator speaking. And it just makes me think, like, did the soldier just give up on him? Just like there's nothing to be done he's he's gone there's no use in trying to help him it just gives me the sense of hopelessness about it from the from both the soldier and and from the old man and so maybe that's kind of what they have um in common there so those are my thoughts and the type of thinking um that i engage in as i'm doing a close read that i am encouraging you all and challenging you all to do um, as you read through again, again, you're examining words and phrases that reflect the thoughts and feelings of characters that may be direct or indirect, right? It may not say exactly that they were upset or hopeless, but the way in which they're speaking and how their actions are being described indicate that that's the emotion that's there. So make sure that you're attuning to those things and not just looking for things that are specifically written out, but things that are also implied. And making sure that you're drawing those quotations, looking at that dialogue and writing your initial thoughts and observations. So as always, it is your turn right now to make sure um, that you get some practice doing a close read, keeping in mind those strategies I just modeled. Um, Make sure that you are uh, rereading the remainder of The Old Man at the Bridge um, and making sure that you're rereading through those think section annotation strategies so you get all of those in line. Once you've done that, Um, You're going to move on to complete the remaining lesson activities, identifying and explaining the theme of the story with evidence from the text. And for the closing activity, like I said before, you're going to create or select an image that best reflects a theme. I am looking forward to you getting really creative here and being thoughtful and intentional about this particular image. Again, it should be a symbol of the theme. It should embody the theme. So when I see it or someone else sees it, they go, "Mm mm-hmm, that that theme is and you fill in the blank there because your image was so strong. So you can create it on your own or you can actually find one. Just make sure that if you find an image that isn't your own, that you cite where you got it from, as always, okay? Uh, so again, looking at that note catcher that I have on the screen. So thinking is you're annotating um, and you're gonna talk um, as well with a family member, um, friend or care grip, caregiver um, and write your answers um, in Uh, the note catcher as well because you're going to be talking about the theme with your family and also your family or your caregiver um, or a friend and you're also going to be giving evidence and so in the right section you're going to be um, disclosing what you talked about in that conversation and then finally um, that 
image or picture, etc. will go in the create or include section there. So you can know exactly where things belong. As always, if you have any questions, you can call the homework hotline. The number is provided along with the hours there and you can email your teacher for support. And I can encourage you to pause, rewind and replay as many times as necessary to make sure you got what you need. And again, you've got this. You did great yesterday. You're going to do great today. And I'm sure that those annotations and activities that you did are going to set you up really nicely to complete these activities for today. As promised for tomorrow, lesson three, you're going to analyze. So we're going to go even deeper, just really pull this story apart, evaluating, not just observing thoughts and feelings, but actually evaluating, thinking about why um, these characters feel the way they feel and then connecting that to the plot and the theme of the story. And so that smaller theme of this particular story, we're going to make big connections to the essential question and the theme of the unit. We're going to make that leap. So looking forward to doing that intense work with you tomorrow. Again, get help where you need it on the homework outline, email your teacher, replay the video. But I'm sure, sure, sure that you're going to do great. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow and do well, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be good.